Hello and welcome to another technical episode of solosplc.com. Today I wanted to focus on a question that has been asked multiple times on different forums as well as through private messages and that is how to add external input and output points to a PLC. And since we've already covered the compact logics that are sitting behind me uh, over here, I wanted to talk about, about the Micrologix 1100 series, since that's one of the most common PLCs that people use to learn PLC programming because it works with the free version of RS Logix 500. And that PLC, in case you're curious, is sitting right here. As you can see, there's already an input card that is tied to it. So we're going to be uh, showing you the process on how to connect to that card physically through hardware. Then we're going to go into our software, configure the right registers. I'm going to show you in RS Logix 500 where those registers are going to be located because it's not as obvious as in Studio 5000. And last but not least, we're going to test those registers by shorting essentially the inputs and seeing those inputs connect on the RS Logix 500 side. Without any further delay, I just wanted to quickly mention that if you have any questions, make sure to post them on the forums. They have been slowly getting more and more active and we encourage you posting questions, comments, perhaps uh, previous stories of uh, your jobs or pictures of projects that you've worked on. And like I said, we are always there to answer them. And without any further delay, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so here we've got the Micrologix 1100 series. It is currently connected over ethernet and powered over 110 VAC. What I'm gonna be doing is live, but I do recommend that you shut down your PLC when you're performing this operation and connecting the IO, which is currently connected to the PLC already, so we're not going to be changing the connections. But what you need to do is, once you get this card, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, there's going to be a ribbon cable that's sticking out, and that is where it's going to connect to the Micrologix series. So I'm just going to close this little door and use a screwdriver, a flathead, to pry that door open. It can be open when the PLC has no connections without, with just your fingers, but it does give you a little bit of a hard time when opening it with the connection already in place. So I'm struggling just a little bit because I'm also standing behind the camera. But ultimately, once you remove this faceplate, you'll notice that there's going to be the ribbon cable as well as the battery. So a couple of you on the side note have been asking why is your PLC losing the IP address? And typically that's because your battery is no longer good. So what happens with these older type PLCs is the IP address is stored in volatile memory that is being backed up by the battery. So as, as long as the battery remains in place, the IP address is going to be stored. And once the battery runs out, of course, it's a rechargeable, it's going to lose that IP address. That being said, to connect the IO card, you're going to plug in this ribbon cable and you've got this little convenient uh, type of a handle that you can use to pull out this connector. So once uh, obviously you power down the PLC, you can remove this and remove the IO card. But in order to connect it like we've done in this case, you're going to plug it into that socket. Now the next step is unless you already know the identific identification number of your card is going to be looking at the side panel here or on the back where the part number is going to be written, but it is a 1762-IQ16 and which is a 16 input uh, DC card. And we're going to look at that in the software, but ultimately what you've got on the card are the terminals and then you've got the status signals for each one of your inputs here on the right hand side. And we're going to look at that once we start triggering them after we've added this card in software. So the next step is going to be adding in, adding this in software and then configuring the card to receive the inputs. Let's switch to RS Logix 500 and see how we can do just that. Okay, so here we are in RS Logix 500 with the latest program that I had on my desktop. The first thing that I always recommend before we're going to add the IO card is to go online with the PLC and perform essentially a correlation with the current code. So I'm going to enter comms who active and then select the Micrologix uh, PLC in this IO tree. Press on OK and we should be able to go online. As you can see, we are in remote run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my program by clicking the save button. Press OK. I do want to upload all the values. And the reason for this is because in a typical plant environment, things may have been changed by somebody other than you and the latest program 
is going to be backed up this way because we will be performing a download. I'm going to go offline by clicking on this remote run, go offline. And here we're going to enter IO configuration. So double click IO configuration. You'll notice that the slot number zero in this case is going to be Micrologics 1100 series, which is our PLC. And next we've got four empty slots. So we can start by entering the card that we've looked at just a few minutes ago. So that's the 1762 IQ 16 or the 16 input 10 to 30 VDC input card. So by double clicking that or by dragging it out to the uh, to the slots, you'll notice that it has been placed in slot number one, which is where it currently resides. And the card has been set, we can close out of this menu by clicking this little X. And the next step is to identify where are these inputs located. So the RS Logix 500 series is going to provide two sections for your inputs and outputs. And that's going to be a zero or O a zero for the outputs and then I one for inputs. If we double click this, you'll notice that there's going to be an array of inputs. But what's really confusing is that the I zero is going to be dictated by the slot for the PLC. And then I one is going to be where the 16 uh, bits for the inputs of the IO card are going to reside. Now a convenient trick is to expand this window. And you'll notice that the reason for the the big array for the micrologics is that there's going to be multiple uh, multiple inputs, but there's also going to be the analog inputs mapped in there. And once we expand this window, the card is going to be specified and that's on that slot number one. And so we can expect the first input of that card to come in in I10, the second one in I1, I11, I12, so on and so forth. So we can start assigning these to logic in our controller. And just to give you an example, I'm assuming that most of you are familiar, but if I copy this, so I'm control seeing on my keyboard, alternatively, you can right click, select copy, and then you can use this for example, as an XIC, actually, let's, uh, let's create a separate rung here, I'm going to create an XIC instruction, paste this in. So that's going to be input number zero. And here, for example, we can create another uh, binary. So let's select from our binary list, for example, B304. And so when this is energized, I'm just going to give this a description. So this is going to be input zero energized that's going to be our description so when this comes on this otu should just latch in and then tell us in this logic that it has been correct i'm going to verify the project everything should be fine actually i'll move this way at the beginning this is some other code that used to be running in the background and then we have to download to the processor so i'm going to select download press ok this is going to give me a warning that I do want to proceed with the download at this specific time. Press yes, press continue because the processor is going to switch to remote program, then switch it back to run, go online, yes. And as you can see, we have successfully programmed the controller. If you want to know the cards that are currently installed on a controller, if you're um, essentially unable to see the hardware, you can open this IO configuration and read all the input and output cards that may be present. That being said, let's connect a sensor and see how this input is going to trigger. All right, so the sensor that we're going to use for the demonstration is a SICK WL2000-B4300 sensor. And just as a quick demo, as I've already wired this up, you can notice that once the sensor is triggered and you can notice the red LED on top, because I'm placing this retro reflective plate in front of the sensor, the input card is also being triggered here on the top. I don't know how well the focus is, but once I put this off camera and then we can look just at the card, you'll notice that the sensor is definitely triggering the right input, which is input zero. Now let's look at the wiring a little bit so that I can explain why certain things have been placed where they are. And if we can open the slot of the input card, the first thing that I needed to connect was the common. So the common wire is going to be landed on this terminal 
Over here, you'll have a schematic as well. So this is the fifth on the left side from the top, and it has been placed on the digital voltage ground. So the DC minus here on the top of the MicroLogics. Then for the sensor, the reason for that is if we pull this into our frame, you'll notice that we've got two outputs. One is the NPN and the other one is the PNP. So the conventional standard in the North American region, at least, is to have syncing inputs. And for a syncing input, we need a PNP output on the sensor side. And so that's going to be wire number four, which is the black cable that is currently landed on input number zero. And that's going to be the signal coming back from our sensor. And then last but not least, the power for the sensor is going to be on brown as well as blue, with brown being plus 24 VDC and then blue being the ground. And those are conveniently placed on the top of the MicroLogix 1100 series PLC, which has those uh, outputs provided. And essentially what those where those are coming from is a internal power supply that's going to regulate the 110 from the bottom that comes in here and then it provides you a way to power some of your sensors i don't necessarily recommend powering a lot of them but uh, you can power a couple and the of course the voltage or the current ratings are going to be in the data sheet so that's how you wire in a sensor into a output card that has been external to the MicroLogix 1100 series. I haven't shown you earlier, but what you can do if you want to add additional cards is there's going to be this little faceplate here on the, on the card. And just like we did with the PLC, you can remove this little card and then you're going to reveal the same exact terminal that we had on the PLC behind this faceplate. And you can chain another card as we saw in the software up to four different cards. And depending on the PLC models, so some of the MicroLogix 1200 series, this is going to be more of the uh, more of these cards that are going to be available. So consult the data sheet and make sure that you understand how those are plugged in. But this is pretty much how you can use the external input and output cards on the MicroLogix series PLCs.